Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Dayan Chita. So I'm going to pick up where I, uh, I left off last time. So last time I talked about Lojong, that mind training using slogans that are uh, uh, remembered and applied in order to reduce ego att attachment and cultivate bodhicitta compassion. And specifically, I discussed the frequent use of my, uh, uh, the Lojong slogan, always meditate upon whatever causes resentment. So some of our later discussion, uh, some of you compared Lojong to Wadu, which was an interesting comparison. And there are definite uh, similarities, but some differences. And I wanna talk about the similarities and differences tonight. So they, they do have some things in common, uh, both rely on the Smriti Sampranjana, the mindfulness and clear comprehension, a minding and reminding to apply a particular statement to our experience. Uh, however, Wadu, at least as I learned it uh, uh, from Johnson and reading Sheng Yan and others, uh, applies the same statement, uh, uh, the critical question to all circumstances with the goal of breaking through conceptual thought, the dualistic mind, uh, experiencing a sudden awakening of some sort. Uh, in that experience, many enjoy, however briefly, a feeling of mental clarity and, and freedom, wisdom, joy, and compassion, the wish that everyone could feel that free and joyful all the time. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily last. And, and what then? Well, Korean Zen master Sabul Sunim considers Wadu uh, practice to be almost an end in itself. Uh, according to the introduction to his commentary on the, the Zen teachings of Wang Bo, a bird in flight leaves no trace. Master Sabul's answer to those wanting to know what to do after their sudden awakening experience was live well. And by that, he apparently meant uh, just stop thinking there is something more you need to do and all will be perfectly clear in and of itself. Perhaps if you can do it. Uh, and yet even Zen masters still seem to involve themselves in ethical scandals or squabble amongst themselves uh, in ways that shows little compassion. I've heard these things happen. So perhaps there is some gradual cultivation yet to do, uh, especially for those of us who aren't yet Zen masters. Uh, so sudden awakening, Wadu, Lojong is more gradual cultivation. And there are numerous types of gradual cultivation, uh, following the precepts, various forms of meditation, mindfulness, loving kindness, shamatha vipassana, focus concentration, open monitoring, all of which are beneficial. But gradual cultivation is learning to cultivate that brief experience of mental clarity, freedom, wisdom, and compassion until it suffuses our entire lives uh, to fully cultivate bodhicitta, the awakened mind, compassion, for all beings. So Lojong is one powerful way to do that. And I'm gonna give you a little background uh, uh, and context for this. So, so Lojong has 59 traditional slogans categorized under seven main points. There are the preliminaries, the basis for Dharma practice, the main practice, which is training in bodhicitta, uh, transformation of bad circumstances into the way of awakening, showing the utilization of practice in one's whole life and the evaluation disciplines and guidelines of mind training. So tonight, I just want to discuss the first slogan, one of the most complex. It's just train in the preliminaries. So those five words, properly understood, can change your entire life. They certainly have mine. So the preliminaries are the basis for Dharma practice. The goal of practice is to cultivate bodhicitta, first absolute bodhicitta, compassion for all beings, and then relative bodhicitta, compassion for specific beings, which is often more difficult, at least for me. The preliminaries help to prepare us for absolute bodhicitta, which provides the foundation for relative bodhicitta, which you work on with other slogans, the other 58. So the preliminaries involve the four thoughts or the four reminders. And we're all familiar with the, the basic concepts, as you'll see. So in her commentary on the preliminaries from her book, Always Maintain a Joyful Mind, Pema Chadron explains these four reminders. One, maintain an awareness of the preciousness of human life. Two, be aware of the reality that life ends, death comes for everyone. Three, recall that whatever you do, whether virtuous or not, has a result. And four, contemplate that as long as you are too focused on self-importance and too caught up in thinking about how you are good or bad, you will experience suffering. 
Zen teacher Norman Fisher uh, uh, seems to disagree that awakening experience alone completely awakens us. And he wrote a book on Lojong, uh, a practice he recommends because of what he sees as a relative lack of systematic training in compassion and Zen. So hence the title of his book, Training in Compassion, uh, Zen Teachings on Lojong. In the book, he outlines three ways of training in the preliminaries. So first, contemplate everything that's happened in your life, good or bad, take responsibility for it. Uh, to train in the preliminaries, he writes, is to stop moaning and feeling sorry for yourself and to recognize that instead that regardless of what has happened or why, this is your life and you are the only one equipped to deal with it. Second, for a specifically Zen context, training in the preliminaries could involve a steady Zazen practice. And a third way is one practiced in Tibetan Buddhism. He writes of the four thoughts that the practice of reflecting on the four points might involve first, reading about them, second, reading about them again and again, third, writing them down and thinking about them, fourth, journaling about them, and fifth, continuing to bring them up in your meditation practice or other times set aside for personal reflection. So deep and systematic reflection on these four points constitutes training in the preliminaries. You mind and remind yourself of these four points until they transform your worldview and consciousness completely. Gradual cultivation to full awakening. So the, the first point, human life is precious because it gives us the freedom and capacity for awakening that we wouldn't have if we were beetles or hungry ghosts. In the practice of Lojong, cultivating compassion through training the mind, Tralag Kyabgan writes that the freedoms we possess consist of being born human, having the pleasure to pursue spiritual practice, possessing physical health and intelligence, contact with the teachings and the moral sensibilities to appreciate those teachings and feel compassion for others. You must remind yourself of these freedoms and endowments every time you practice and engrave them deeply in your mind. Second point, everything is impermanent including our precious human lives. Everything ends, we will die. Many are disturbed by thoughts of their death, but there's no reason for fear or wishful thinking. What should we do with it? We should act now. Third point, the power of karma. We all understand that karma doesn't mean the woo-woo sort of cosmic, what goes around comes around that it means in popular American culture, the karma's a bitch way of thinking about it. We know that it's just the law of actions and consequences because of countless actions of others of our, and ourselves in the past, we are the way we are now. Because of the power of the karma, we can change our minds and our world by making different and more skillful choices. And every thought and action and reaction and inaction at every moment changes us. Karma can be our friend. Fourth point, the ultimate unsatisfactoriness of samsara, or as Fisher puts it, the inescapability of suffering. This is the first noble truth, dukkha exists. It's not that life is suffering, but that unless we transform our minds and relate it to the, relate to the universe in a different and more skillful way, we'll find a lot of dissatisfaction in our lives, but we can change that. So my shorthand version uh, to help me remember those, these four points, choice, impermanence, karma, dukkha. The points are interrelated. Samsara is ultimately unsatisfactory, partly because we are conditioned by karma to attach ourselves to impermanent things as if they were permanent. But because of our precious human birth and our freedom and capacity for awakening, we can recognize or recondition ourselves through different karmic choices, realize the impermanence of samsara, indeed even realize with Nagarjuna that nirvana is samsara. And there's an urgency as well. We're human now, but we won't always be, so we need to act. Uh, carpe diem, seize the day, seize the moment. We'll have a reminder of this tonight. Life and death are of supreme importance. Opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Do not squander your time by night or day. So through Lojong, we can learn to transform everything in we encounter or experience, every word, every action, every reaction into the path of awakening. It's a constant intentional practice engaging everything we do. And training in the preliminaries, minding and reminding ourselves of dukkha, impermanence, karma, our choice, until we make those truths real for ourselves and restructure our entire worldview is the foundation of all later Lojong practice. So to sum up, um, Wadu and Lojong are both mind training in a sense, and both rely on mindfulness and clear comprehension uh, and a constant minding and reminding. But at least in my experience, Wadu is an excellent technique for sudden awakening and Lojong for gradual cultivation. 
With Wadu, we can get a glimpse of the unconditioned and a brief feeling of wisdom and compassion. With Lojong, we can gradually cultivate that feeling of wisdom and compassion, the bodhicitta, the awakened mind with compassion for all sentient beings. So perhaps, maybe, for some people, Wadu leads to an eternal flame of wisdom and compassion that never goes out. But maybe for others, it leads to a spark of wisdom and compassion. And Lojong is a process of feeding the flame and building it into a roaring fire. So I'll end with a, a, a bodhicitta prayer popular in Tibetan Buddhism, often attributed to Nagarjuna. May the precious and sublime awakened mind arise where it has not arisen, and where it has arisen, may it not decay, but grow ever more and more. Wadu helps the awakened mind arise, and Lojong helps it grow more and more. Thank you for listening.